Uh, one thing that people have to get clearly in, in mind, because we've just done a video that dealt with the term informant, which occurs on the statement of birth record. Now, you understand that when an informant uh, basically works with a police force, an armed force, they're generally there because there's been an obstruction or a, uh, a penalty uh, or a tort in the law that has occurred. Now, I know this may sound totally ridiculous that a child could possibly commit a crime, but because the child, being with the parents, uh, guilty by association, have been informed on, on this document. And therefore, the, the name, in its essence, has been arrested. They arrested what was theirs. And because you arrest debt many times, that's kind of the fiction of law when you go and research it, that there really isn't a debtor's prison. We just put it under different charges or terminologies of crime, contempt of court, many other things such as that, which allows them to arrest someone. A fiction cannot harm a man, but when a man believes he's a fiction, he will be harmed by it because that means he's taking the surety ship or the guarantor to say he's gonna be responsible under a fiction of law to give jurisdiction to an illusionary debt that actually doesn't even exist. So when we wake up to this knowledge, we begin to realize uh, that we've deceived ourselves uh, due to our lack of understanding of the Bible and certainly a lack of understanding of how the civil system operates around us. Now, to be clear, from my research, and this is my opinion of the surname, the surname is forbidden by law to be used. It's somebody else's property. It belongs now currently, if we want to say the term in Canada, Her Majesty. And that's why you were summoned or commanded to appear in the name of Her Majesty because you're using Her Majesty's granted arms or surname. And therefore, because of your use with it, you're guilty by holding that title and now you're guilty to defend what you were doing with that title. And therefore, this is very similar to the system that went on in ancient Rome. And of course, everybody carried the Caesar's title. And therefore, all being little Caesars holding title, granted by Caesar, they were guilty, not innocent. They were guilty, according to law, for the use of defending its title and what they were doing with it. They were under duty, debt, and obligation for its use. And that's why the surname meant debtor. It held you to a duty or a tax or an obligation for the use of property that did not belong to you. It was granted to you in trust and therefore you were entrusted with its care and usage. In order to use it, you would need a license. License is permission to break the law because it is against the law to use the surname without license. So therefore, in order to use the property that is not yours, something that is alienable, it means it can be leaned or conveyed for purposes of debt, for purposes of fee, for purposes of tax, for purposes of penalty, for purposes to enforce law under armed force, for using a name that is contrary to your real name. So almost look at it as a penalty, not only for lying, of which you would be doing by the use of it because you're actually working incognito, undercover, under concealment of your real name. So if we go to the Gage Dictionary, we've read this before, but I have no problem reading it again because it's important for people to see this because if they do not see it, Many times it does not seem to sink in because we have been many times accused in the world of accusations that we're making all this up. But if you've ever seen the library that we have access to and that we've been blessed to have the access to, you would understand that we have all the research availability to prove what we're saying. And therefore, we're not alleging something. We're stating it as a fact from the research that anybody can do. And therefore, if we are saying something wrong, we are open to being corrected to show what the 
truth would be if we are incorrect with it. But we have not been found incorrect. And surprisingly for the viewers uh, that are watching this video, we haven't had anybody come up with anything ever in an email or a text or in any communication where anybody was in contact with us regarding any of this information being erroneous. Inconvenient we've been accused of bringing people into. It's very inconvenient, the truth, because in the world of fiction, truth doesn't work. It's at rest. Fiction goes to work. And that's why I've always stressed you have to let the paper work. Why are you working for the paper? If someone is deceiving you, maybe you better wake up to realize that you have to let the paperwork, not you, go to work. If something is a lie, you have a moral reason to not participate. And only you can make a moral choice. So when we go to the word surname in the gauge, which gauge actually used to be wage, a wager. So when we use the word gauge, it was replaced by the, it used to be wage, but we just cover it with gauge. Now, under surname, very simply, the name that members of a family have in common. Now, if you go to Johnson's Dictionary, one of the first definitions of common is prostitute. You go to the word hireling, prostitute, one who sells his body corporate for money. That's really what's going on there. So, because under spiritual, you can't sell yourself. You can't sell a gift from God. That's called simony. And you'd have to look that up in the law. It's selling spiritual preferments. You're not able to do that. That's against God, to sell a gift you have that you were given for free. So you're all pardoned by God for free, but if you want to walk in the legal, well, then they have a fictional conveyance name that you can sell for money. Therefore, you can be a legal prostitute under a license. And I can tell you right now that there'll be a lawyer ready to pimp your ride. Now, under surname, again, it says the name that the members of a family have in common, common being prostitute, family name, which came from familia, which is fictio, when we're talking about the Roman civil system, the gens, the Gentiles, those with no covenant with the true God, those that come in last with a last name. Further, it says, name added to a person's real name. Well, that would infer that a person has a real name and a fictitious name. So we can now go to the law book again. I didn't write these law books. Surprisingly, the knowledge is there for anybody to find. So we go under fictitious name. And under fictitious name, it says, <clears throat> now remember, fictitious means founded in fiction. Okay? So fictitious name, a counterfeit, feigned, or pretended name taken by a person. Taken. Differing in some essential particular from his true name. Now, truth has to be free from fiction. The surname is a fictitious name, not a real name. So it says that in order to have a fictitious name, you would require a Christian name and a patronymic or a, Roy, a, a Roman name, a romance name, a fictional name. Because to romance is to lie. So, in the world that you operate in, if you do not understand these words, you will operate in fiction. You will be basically accused under a penalty of lying, which leads back to what has happened here. Why it is forbidden for you to use the surname is because it's not your property. Therefore, you require a grant. No one was given the right to use their surname. And in fact, the nations that exist now are even treasonous against what appears to be the de jure nations, or the original monarchs who had granted this surname, or this coat of arms. 
that only came under royal appointment. So therefore, by using it, it is forbidden. But you have to look at the word forbidden. Because someone is bidding against you to see whether or not you will use it. We call that gaming. That's why they even have a fishing game act. Because someone's fishing for you. They're trying to allure you in, hook, line, and sinker, casting out the bait on some benefits and privileges for you to break the law. So they give you a basically counterfeit token of value. And then you use that birth certificate or counterfeit token of value that does not say given name or surname. We call that the wallet size. And that wallet size is actually appears to be able to achieve you to reach to get money so you can participate in there. But now you're working for a third party under a fictitious name. But it is forbidden. And therefore, every time you use it, there will be a debt, a debt, a duty, and an obligation for the use of it. So people have assumed which is to take on deceit, that they have the right to use it, but there is no proof anywhere. Just because your parents filled in a document, the document was a, was a legislative authority that was forbidding the use of it, and so because your parents were using it, it was taken away. It was arrested. So they have an illusionary arrested entity, that's what the birth certificate represents, someone who's been arrested, dead, cardiac arrest, a deadbeat, no heartbeat, no money. And then you take that and you use that to become a participant and therefore you're breathing your spirit, your given name into their dead body corporate. And therefore you go and make that live. That's what we call it, make a living. If you do not understand the words, you're gonna be lost on this journey. Not only is it forbidden by their authority to use the surname without a license, license permission to use someone else's property and pay the duty, debt, and obligation for its use. <clears throat> also, it is forbidden by God for you to be, as a Christian, unequally joined with them in any participation. Friendship with the world is enmity with God. When you join into a common association, you're into the common Gentile house of prostitutes selling themselves for money, which means they can't be trusted because they can be bribed for money. A Christian is not for sale. He lives by faith and belief, and therefore by staying true, he is immune from their world but not when he crosses the line. If he attributes, which what the surname is, it's an agnomen, an attribute. If you attribute that name to yourself, you're actually breaking their law because it's not yours. You're lying in order to gain something. You're taking private claim to a public taxable publican name that is not yours. And therefore you must pay your share for its use. That is why Christ was very clear on the tax issue. If you are using that name, then you are required to attribute that tax because you've taken it on. But remember, his kingdom was no part of this world. So therefore, he is not part, and nor, neither could any Christian believer, true believer, be part of that world. So if you are part of the secular world, well then unfortunately you're part of the common aggregate and therefore you're part of what is participating out there that's under this duty, debt, and obligation. We are not tax protesters as Christians. We're there to pursue and seek the kingdom of God and that's not taxable. That's exempt. That's truthful activity. That's not private gain or pecuniary gain to make money on the kingdom of God, as we know state religions are doing. So we have to be clear on this information 
that is in the legal world and understand that it is actually has a twofold meaning. It's not only forbidden by their world to use the surname without a license, it's forbidden by God for you even be involved with them. So you must overcome this presumption that your parents had filled in because it appeared that they were involved and most likely you would too. And therefore, the whole stage was set for you to enter in social insurance, health cards, every other thing that you've ever used out there, driver's license, it goes on and on and on. All the things that you use in their world, you're having to do with your signature based on your unfortunately unfounded belief and conviction because you're going against good conscience. You're doing something that's just a mere belief, but it misrepresents the fact of who you really are by using property that belongs to someone else. And therefore, not everything lawful is honorable.